Hey everybody, I am back and I'm going to be doing a new vivarium. No water feature I don't think this time, I think it's just going to be a woodland setting. It's going to be very lush, lots of moss, plants, things like that, wood. Um, got a lot of driftwood so I think it should be pretty fun. I'm going to put it on top of uh, my one of my racks. Uh, this will be a 40 gallon breeder um, and I will be utilizing a false bottom, a little drainage hold, using the diamond bit hold saw to drill a little uh, plug in there. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but that is the one half inch bit for a one quarter or for a quarter inch, not one, but a quarter inch uh, plug so I can drain the um, the false bottom when I need to. And uh, really thinking it'll be pretty fun. Maybe some uh, mole salamanders like um, uh, spotted or marble. That was my first thought, but don't even necessarily need to do that. It could be uh, a plethodontid species, like a, another lungless species. I'm just not sure yet. Um, but I'm going to build the enclosure and get a good idea um, of what might fit well into it in terms of species. But I just have a vision in my head of how I want it to look. I know a lot of salamanders could live there. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out what exactly I want to put in. But um, I want to build the enclosure. And then um, as I go, I'll get a better idea. But really looking forward to this one. Um, I haven't built one without water in a while, so uh, it makes it a little bit easier and gives me a little bit more time to um, focus on the plants and all that other kind of stuff. Because when there's water, you're a little bit, you're kind of limited to what you can use sometimes just because of the, the land area and things like that. So um, excited to embark on this one and um, let's get started. All right, real quickly, um, drilled the half inch diamond bit hole saw um, through the glass. Um, where I want my drain to be. Um, it sucks. I actually wish that this plastic things that hold the, the kind of keep all this stuff in line um, when they make these tanks was a little lower because I don't, I don't like, you know, you, you got to be careful because you can only get so, so low on these things where, you know, with this plug will overlap this and it won't make it a, a seal. But these are these plugs. This is a quarter inch. Um, and then you just kind of press it in there with your thumb and it makes this watertight seal. I've never had one of these leak, and then you just put in one of these flow valves. Um, again, I learned this, um, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Tanner Serpa, uh, Serpa Design. He he has a really good method for draining vivariums. I advise you watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, but I, I've been doing this now after I saw it for a while, um, and it's just a lot easier. You just put an airline tube on here, and then you just kind of open up the valve, and then the water will just flow out as opposed to trying to like siphon it out with a hose. This is just a lot easier. So, um, so the false bottom will probably come up to about there. And so when water fills up to about here, you just drain it and it goes, you know, back down to about there. And, you know, and actually what I do typically do is I will leave for my fully terrestrial setups or actually any setup where I have a false bottom with these things as I'll actually leave them open with a bucket down there and just let it drain, especially if I'm going out of town for a week or two or something. Um, and they can just drain. So there's no risk of the water getting too high and the soil, you know, the substrate becoming anaerobic. Um, so I actually just leave it. <laughs> um, some people don't do that, but normally I just leave them, you know, closed in the off position. But um, yeah. Oh, the other thing that he does that I didn't mention here is that he puts a little bit of airline tube and he cuts it with a uh, razor blade. And then you just kind of like, you know, it, it makes it a tight fit. So it, it, it's watertight versus... Um, you know, without it, because without it, it's loose. So um, something else I should mention, but um, yeah. So um, I'm gonna start making the false bottom, which is the pain in the you know what, um, but I'm gonna make, make the false bottom for this whole whole thing. So I'm gonna have to use a lot of egg crate and um, I will show you what it looks like. All right, real quick, I did the um, false bottom. It's about two and a half, two and three quarters inches tall. I've got the carbon fiber window screen. I used the wire snippers, uh, wire cutters, whatever the hell those are. Um, Scissors, a great light diffuser, and then there's zip ties. I'm not showing them, but those are the zip ties. You just kind of tie it all together. Um, it's pretty snug in here. I don't know. Um, you know put some gravel in the front, uh, and then I'm just going to have to build up the background all around this. I mean, this is pretty sturdy. I'm not too worried. Um, you know, the, the, the dirt and everything will displace or the substrate. Um, I'm going to foam a lot of stuff probably into the background. Um, and I have some really cool hardscape elements I wanna use for this one, and I'll show you guys here. So this is what I just did. I, um, I put the false bottom in. Um, it's pretty tight in there, but I wanted it to be really tight, so I put the gravel in the front now. Um, so it will not, 
um, move and also so you don't see the ugly egg crate. As you can see, I also did it on this side as well. And the reason I did this is um, to keep it tight because um, unfortunately, I made this thing, this false bottom is never gonna be able to come out because when I create a background, it's gonna be over this stuff. You know, it's gonna be covering these things, whether it's foam or styrofoam or wood, this is not gonna be able to come out. So this has to be really, really sturdy. I mean, and, um, I think it's gonna be okay. I mean, otherwise I'm gonna have to tear the whole tank apart. Um, but anyways, I just thought I would tell you that um, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than I thought, just because I'm not gonna be able to put the tank on its side or anything now. But I have to put the false bottom in first and I don't want it shifting around when I'm building the background because I don't, you know, I definitely want that stuff under there to be essentially covered up. Um, and that also serves another purpose, which is to keep the substrate up from getting in on the margins there, uh, on the periphery of this thing. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm just gonna have to figure out the kind of background I wanna do now. Not sure if I wanna use foam like that, styrofoam like that, like I did with my cave salamander setup, or just the regular great stuff pond and stone slash gaps and cracks. We'll just have to see. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm kind of doing this, I'm winging it here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to start with some of this foam. I also found these blocks I had uh, to carve stuff, which is good. Um, I'll use some of the stuff I used last time, but it's pretty thin. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using this thing like a ruler, like a straight edge, and I'm using a blade like that. And what I'm doing is I'm making some corners. And so I'm going to carve the corners before I put them in, but they're going to be like that, and then I'm going to build up things around it. Like, <coughs> Ooh, God, the fumes. Sorry about that. Get, I'm going to get high. Um, the fumes from uh, the uh, silicone are still pretty strong. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to um, carve this up using the uh, hot knife that I have and hot wire. Um, I'm going to do another one just like that. You know, basically I just put this on here like this and then just, whoosh, just you know, cut it. So I'm going to have two of the corners um, so I can build up the background. But this is how I think I'm going to do it. And I'm going to carve the pieces as I go and kind of silicone or foam them in and uh, make a bunch of what look what would look like rocks and some other things. I think it'll be pretty cool. Let's check it out. All right, so I skipped ahead a little bit. Um, I carved using my carving tool that I told you guys about. It's a hot wire and a knife. I mean, as you can see, I've got some corners. Uh, they'll go back in those corners, um, and then I'll build up with some of these fake rocks around. I know they kind of look like crap right now in this dull gray, um, which is, by the way, that is the... Um, original gray dry lock, charcoal, quick, quick crete, and a little bit of buff. Um, and what I'm going to do is build these uh, up. Well, actually, I'm going to paint the rest of them, um, you know, finish painting them, excuse me, um, some other colors. Um, you can see a little bit of the detail. Um, it should look okay when it's all highlighted and stuff like that. But I'll dry brush technique. I'll, I'll put some dark areas, make it look good. And then I'll just build it up the way I want to. Um, those two pieces right there will go kind of on that end. And that end, and then what I was thinking is I'll f put uh, expanding foam around it, foam everything in, and then um, put a little bit, maybe put some cocoa fiber in some spots, maybe uh, put a little wall where moss can grow, but I don't know yet. I'm, I'm probably going to do the cocoa fiber um, and stuff, so it looks like the rocks are kind of uh, on the side of uh, a mound or something like that, but we'll see. I'm um, just got to let this stuff dry. It takes forever to dry, to be honest. It says it doesn't, but it really does. So I might take a hair dryer to this stuff or just let it dry overnight and then continue to um, paint it uh, with the dark spots and the highlights um, and then go from there. So in case any of you wonder how I get the effect like this on rocks, on the fake rocks. Um, so as you can see, um, you know, it's like a little bit of a brown. There's some charcoal, some gray. These started with that really di uh, dull color. And I darkened them up. They don't look really that cool. Look, that's still wet, see? Even after 24 hours, it's still wet. That's why this crap takes forever to dry. But what I do is, is um, so in this case, I mixed some buff quickcrete with the brown quickcrete just by themselves. And what I do is, I'm going to show you here. I just have a little bit in there, as you can see. And I just kind of get a little bit... I don't want a lot, and then I just will go ahead, and I'll show you here, and I will brush. See that? How it, comes, how it goes on? 
It's uh, kind of hard to film this at the same time as doing it, but it's um, pretty easy. You just kind of brush it on, just kind of dry brush. And as you can see, it kind of gives it a little highlights. It makes it look realistic. You see that? Um, so I'm going to do that um, to all of these. I've already done it on some of these. Um, I'm, it dries really quickly. I'm going to finish these up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gray original dry lock right here. And I'm going to do the same thing and put little kind of light gray highlights on it in addition to this and see how it looks. I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, everybody. Um, I have started to work on the hardscape. Um, I made a really big mistake in by putting this tank. I'm really pretty high up here right now. I'm actually, if I get off the ladder, ooh, as you can see, I put the tank up there. This is gonna be on top. This is gonna be, you know, another, like I said, the 40 grant, one of the 40 gallon breeder things. Um, and I put the tank up here by myself because I didn't want to try to lift this with all the driftwood and other stuff. Um, and so I am have this little slot because the opening, as you can see, the ceiling's right there and the opening is not as big as under these other lower ones. Um, so I'm gonna have to be very careful and very methodical and very slow on this one, unfortunately, um, because I have very limited room to work. As you can see, the lid is right here on my head. So I'm like kind of punched over. Um, but what I'm doing is, is I'm foaming everything in. I've made these rock walls on either side for the front. I'm gonna do cocoa fiber and bark chips and silicone, all that stuff in. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna carve this. It'll probably take me a week to carve it. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be horrible. Um, but I've also foamed in some of the fake rocks under here to kind of get a really cool look. Um, I think it'll all look pretty cohesive when it's done. I've got this really cool tree stump that's pretty heavy over here. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that yet. Um, and I've got this other, uh, I guess, and, you know, part for the beginning I'll use on this side. And then I have all these other rocks, as you can see, some down there. Uh, focus. Focus. Come on, there we go. You can kind of see them. I'm actually using my iPhone right now, my other camera. I don't want to bring it up here and risk dropping it. So, um, anyways, um, it's going to take a while. i got to wait for some of this crap to dry before I can put some of these other pieces of wood on um, and then go from there. But once I get the hardscape uh, kind of in, um, I'm going to uh, start to do the carving and do everything in terms of the cocoa fiber and go from there and just see how it is. It's just gonna take a really long time. I wish I would have done all this before I put it up here, but I don't have anybody to help me put it up here. So uh, I gotta do it this way, but um, I think it should be pretty cool. And I will um, come back to you once I've finished a little bit more. So I actually went ahead and carved. It took about two days on and off of carving. Um, I put that tree stump in there. It looks pretty cool. Um, sorry for the crappy lighting. I just don't have the normal light that I would have yet. And this is gonna be the tubes for the misting. Um, but as you can see, I've got the rocks um, on the sides. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint the background or if I'm gonna just put cocoa fiber bark chips, things like that. But as you can see, I put a lot of hardscape elements in. I use some of the fake rocks, um, but not too many of them. Um, I want to have this more wooded, so I'll save the rocks for something else. But uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I like that tree stump over there in the corner. It'll look cool. I'll probably end up doing, just smearing the silicone and doing the old coconut fiber and, um, uh, you know, bark chips and some sphagnum moss. and. I'm gonna plant a lot of things. I actually went hiking today and got a lot of cool plants, um, like mosses and things like that. Um, so, um, might use some of those in here. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I like the way that this that the hardscape turned out. Um, I don't know that I have enough silicone, so I'll probably have to go to the store and, and figure that out. I, I think it'll probably look better if I do that than paint it, but I'm not sure yet. I gotta, I gotta see, um, you know, with the quick crete and dry lock. Just, that just takes forever, and I don't wanna wait weeks more for it to dry, so. Um, anyways, I'm going to clean this glass up and uh, figure out the next step. All right, so let's make our substrate. Um, this is going to be an important part. This is a wood lump charcoal that I smashed up. Um, so I'm going to use this. Put it in a, I put it in a bag and then hammered it away. Um, and so I'm going to use this in there. Um, I'm going to add some other things now. I've, I've showed this before, probably for my tiger salamander setups, but... Uh, I'll show you what I add, and uh, we'll mix, mix this stuff up. Next thing you add is in some sphagnum moss. As you can see here, I'm going to break this up a little bit. I don't like these huge strands. I'm going to kind of mess it up and cut it up a little bit, and I'll show you the next component. 
Okay, so I just added a bunch of bark chips in um, these things. As you can see, it's a bark chip. <laughs> um, I'm actually using Repta bark. This stuff seems to hold up pretty well. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I don't do, do any special parts. You know, two parts this, one part that, half part this. I just put in what I want until I kind of like the way the consistency of it. Um, some people like to use a lot more sphagnum moss. I don't. I don't want it to look like a sphagnum moss substrate. If anything, I'll use more soil, but um, organic potting soil. But yeah, I'll show you the next couple components right now. So now I just dumped in a bunch of coconut fiber. This is all just dry, um, you know, and this is another big part of what I do. Um, this stuff seems to hold up well. Um, and so you just kind of mix it up a little bit. I haven't wet it down yet, um, but just mix it up as you go, kind of see how you like the way it looks, um, you know, so. Nothing, not, not rocket science. Um, and then now I'll add the organic potting soil. All right, added in the organic potting soil. So you can see this is a, a lot darker of a color um, than the coconut fiber. So you can see the contrast there. And so now it's just a process of mixing it all up. Um, and then you have to get it a little damp, not wet, but damp. You don't want it to be bone dry like this. Um, and this is kind of your substrate, you know, it's pretty simple. It seems to work well for me. Uh, this is the organic potting soil I use. Um, I think this is actually Repta soil I'm using, but um, but you can buy organic, like you know, generic organic potting soil from nurseries. But you got to read and make sure that there's like no weird chemicals or fertilizers in it, because you know that you know. Remember, amphibians drink through their skin, whether they breathe through their skin or they don't. They all drink through their skin, so um, you don't want to kill your animals by accident. So uh, that's the thing with amphibians and most of us unfortunately learn the hard way um, when something bad happens because you just you know you, we you know things that we might think are harmless or not so it's got to be you know always err on the side of caution with this stuff um, and you know so sometimes I'll buy rep the soil because I know it's safe for animals I've been using it for a long time it's a little more expensive I don't really care to pay that but you know it is what it is so um, I'm gonna start layering this stuff in the tank um, I'll probably slope it up a little bit towards the back um, I know people like to do that to give it depth, um, but I have that tree trunk, so I gotta be a little careful. I don't wanna bury that thing and not be able to see any of the really cool, um, uh, you know, structure of that. The other thing is um, I had a big piece of cork bark that I sawed in two, um, and I'm gonna have this really cool pieces in there. These are really cool hiding spots for, for salamanders. It's, you know, you can see it's hollow. Um, so I'm gonna have both of these in there. It's got some lichen on it. I really like the way these look, really cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start to get the substrate in, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So by the way, um, I, this is what the background ended up looking like. I did the uh, bark chips and the God, terrible glare in here. Stupid lights. Sorry about that. Um, I did the bark chips and I did the uh, cocoa fiber. I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, as you can see... Um, Putting in the substrate, but uh, yeah, I thought it turned out pretty cool. I'm gonna like this big piece of wood in the back that kind of runs along and got that stump over there. Uh, I'll make it look really cool once all the plants and everything are in, but yeah, I like this one a lot. So let's uh, finish adding the substrate and we'll get to go from there. All right, well, I uh, got my substrate in. As you can see, there's a couple inches in the front, about four to five inches in the back. Again, these aren't gonna be tiger salamanders, uh, probably marbled or spotted i just don't know yet we'll see i'm gonna let it go for a while before i add any animals um but i added these pieces of cork bark um really nice i like the you can see the lichen on them um really cool um just kind of set them up in random spots there's going to be a lot of moss in this and there's going to be some ferns and some other things so um we'll see i'm also going to put a mist king in either corner so I'm probably going to drill that here next just to make sure I have room for the nozzles to come down. I still have to make the lid. I'm making a plexiglass or a acrylic lid for this one, and I'm drilling um, holes in it. Um, I'll show you here what, it, what it's going to look like. Hold on. So it's going to look something like this. Um, these are just door hooks that I <laughs> put on. But so you can see there's holes, and I have the acrylic drilled or uh, cut. So um, it will match up with the Miskin corners and this adds the ventilation. This is a lid for another one that I need to add more holes because it was getting too foggy. 
So, um, but anyways, it'll be something like that. I need to make it. So, um, not going to show you that process. It's just a pain, but um, I will be making something like that, and um, I'll show you what the plants look like now. So, I want to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, I'm hooking up my Miss King just pieces. This is a single mist. Excuse me, I can't even speak. Mist assembly, as you can see right here. Um, and then this is a T. This fits into the top. Um, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and do a tutorial on Miss King, but um, when you use these little squares, these little wedges or whatever they're called, you buy them from Miss King. Um, well, they're from Miss King and you can buy them anywhere. Um, I will tell you that I have a lot of the double nozzles, the ones that have two. Um, you, you can try, but um, I was using the double nozzles on the side because I thought it would be better. But what happens is, is the pressure from the hose, even though it's locked down, it makes the nozzles go up and it sprays straight up and it's a mess. So um, in, when I'm using these wedges, I will only use these single um, assemblies. Um, and what I'm going to do is hook these. I'm just going to cut these hoses and hook them up to either side. I'm going to put another one on this side here in a minute. Um, but it's really easy um, and you know it will water everything these I highly recommend these these are I believe what zoos and uh, aquariums and places like that use um, I use them for everything um, they're, they're really good um, put them on a timer um, but anyways I just wanted to let you know this is just food for thought you only use the single nozzle from here unless I'm missing something because I've never had luck using a double nozzle the only times I use double nozzles is if they're in the front of the tank so I actually have 10 double nozzles that I'm not using right now. So I gotta give me some good ideas of what to use those on guys. <laughs> All right, just wanted to give you guys that uh, quick update on how I actually water these things. All right, so let's walk through this. Um, first things first, I got the Miss Kings hooked up. As you can see, I have the hoses going into the T, running across this side, going into that. Um, so those are ready to go. I'll test them here shortly. Um, I also added some more hardscape. I put some branches that I had uh, sterilized a while back um, in here. I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, and I uh, got the grasses planted I talked about. There's another one back there. You can see, um, it's kind of hard to see it. Um, but uh, also I've got the creeping fig over here going up this rock wall. Um, some creeping fig there. I've got this other, I don't know what kind of moss this is. It grows all over my yard. Um, I don't know if it's badge moss, it might be, I, I forget what it's called. Um, but anyways, I've got that. Um, and really that's it, just a lot of moss, got the ferns in there, um, and the creeping figs and, these, and this grass stuff. I hope this grass stuff kind of takes off and uh, will grow and kind of shoot up sprouts. Uh, I think it'll look pretty cool. Um, but anyways, yeah, pretty happy with the way they set up. Also put some leaf litter in. Um, and uh, yeah, just a ton of moss. I mean, the moss is really all over the place. There's moss under there. There's moss everywhere in here. So um, I'm gonna put a lid on this that's going to um, be pretty humid. Um, just to, to, I've, I've had problems growing ferns. Um, so I'm gonna keep it pretty humid in here, meaning the glass will probably get fogged up. But I'm really happy with this. Um, I like the way it looks. Um, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna have to figure out what kind of animals. Oh, I also added springtails. So I didn't mention that, but there are springtails in here. Well, got the new light hooked up and we are ready to go. As you can see, it's nice and bright in here. I've got it on about uh, eight or nine hours uh, of brightness a day. Uh, I'm gonna put the lid on here shortly so it will create some humidity so those ferns can thrive. And I'm um, really happy with the way it turned out. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be uh, hanging off a ladder doing this next time. I'm gonna do the next one on the ground um, and then just have to have somebody help me lift it in. I'm definitely not ready to uh, uh, do that again. That took, it took a lot longer, probably double the amount of time it normally would, but um, really liking this and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, stay tuned because I am going to be getting some animals for this in the next month or so once it's cycled a little bit. And, um, you know, obviously please like, leave comments, subscribe. Uh, love talking to all you guys and uh, appreciate um, all the support as uh, the channel continues to grow and I continue to um, have more resources to create cool environments. And uh, let's get ready for the next build. Hope you guys have a good week.